You have known me under many names, but right now, you know me as... Oh my God! That is Malachi Black! Ever since I was young, I loved martial arts. And it turned out in the world of professional wrestling, I wasn't the only one. Join me as I throw hands with some of your favorite professional wrestlers from around the world and find out why they share this affinity for the sport. We are here in Kissimmee, uh, Kissimmee Muay Thai, to be precise. I'm here with my head coach, Simon Harrison, and uh, we're throwing hands with Marina Shavir today. Invicta FC fighter, all-around badass, badass mom, uh, former WB NXT, recently made her debut for AEW. Um, martial artist of the highest order, one of the four horsemen of uh, MMA. She doesn't need this introduction because she is just an all-around badass, but I had a, a really good conversation with her. Uh, we're talking about her mind as an athlete, how she translates the moniker, the problem and where it comes from. Growing up uh, as a martial artist, one of her first few memories as being a judoka, also being married to one of the, in my opinion, greatest professional wrestlers of the modern age. So let's go some throwing hands with uh, Marina. Simon and me have been getting our ass handed to us by uh, Marina here. And uh, Marina is going to show us her one of her favorite combinations that includes a takedown, which I'm not super familiar with, but this is about martial arts, not strictly Muay Thai kickboxing. This is an all enclosed encapsulation of various disciplines and martial art here in uh, Kissimmee Muay Thai today where we uh, find ourselves. So Marina, on you and break it down slowly because you're going to kick my ass even more. Oh, well, no, no, no. We're just gonna go easy. So I start off with boxing, so I tend to favor like a boxer stance initially. So when I, to use it to my advantage, using just a basic jab from going, starting with upstairs, going downstairs. So it's jab, jab moving close, and keeping the right hand right on your chin, throwing the right hand, but stepping in with your body to go forward with an inside leg trick. They'll end up in snapping my ankle. Most yes. Likely. All right. You're not a cat. 
So let's see how this uh, looks in real life, and lo and behold, if I'm not prepared for it, I'm getting get shots to the face. There we go. So that one more time. <laughs> and then you can do it to me. <laughs> I'm gonna fail horribly. Let's go. Push. Don't be afraid to force attack. Do it. Force to tap? Yeah, I'll tap. Okay. Even though you're not wearing the typical gloves. Okay. That's fine. Yeah? Go. Well. There you have it. That's oh. lethal as hell. There we go. I felt that. <laughs> you made me do it. <laughs> well, there we go. Thank you very much, Marina. Thank you for and, having me. Uh, here we go. Throwing hands with Marina. We threw more than hands. She threw me around. She threw Simon around. We got our asses beat. So, thank you. Thank you. Luis. Os. You are someone that has a pretty unique background because you have a different background as to where you come from. You mm -hmm. represent a different, uh, a different country, other than obviously also living in the United States. But you know your your heritage is much different than a lot of people realize. Um, High-ranking, high-profile MMA fighter turned professional wrestler, and still embodying the martial artist within you in your style in your way of portraying your style of professional wrestling to the masses for you coming from that different background what was what what do you feel makes you so unique uh well i've finally come to the point in my life where i realized that i am my own worst enemy and that's something that I deal with every day. No one else has to deal with that. I am my own problem. And that's where the problem came from. I just finally decided to take fear head on and to really get to know myself and to really understand what attributes I have. And at the same time, understanding that I have a lot of fucking work to do. Um, that's why I, I still love this environment. This is why I, lo I still love to train. It's what keeps me a problem, I believe. Um, I get broken down and built back up uh, pretty much any day of the week that I choose. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's in, in control for me right now in mm -hmm. my life. Like right. I'm very grateful that I have the freedom to build on myself. Um, that's why I'm obsessed with this culture. That's why I'm obsessed with still training like uh the fear of getting older is like very slowly starting to dwindle because like i'm i'm just trying to be able to move my body and be efficient with it and have purpose and i'm really truly understanding it a little bit more every day and uh it just all it, it just always goes back to like my journey as a judoka like my mm -hmm. parents decided to put me in judo when i was really little Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I just, that was like when it really just started and falling in love with fighting and just like not knowing what was going to fucking happen. Like being completely, uh, it's a drug. Being prepared for the unknown in there is all you want to do is rise to the occasion. But with that equally there's failure, but like just truly deciding to not see how far up that ledge is, but just going on the fuck up so you can like see the view. You said something that I find very interesting, you know, about the, uh, the unknown, right? It's funny because uh, recently I've been getting a lot of questions and I've always been getting questions from like younger talent, younger, younger pro wrestlers. Cause obviously that's how you and I know each other. Um, about like, well, if there's one, one type of information, you know, one type of piece of wisdom or advice that you can give me, what is that? And I, you know, I can give them the, oh, you know, yeah, you know, keep your, keep your mouth shut and your ears, you know, and that's still valid. But nowadays I tell them, be prepared to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. 
because everything about being not just a professional wrestler but a pro athlete is about being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. it, it's never going to go your way. And we were just having a conversation about control when you brought that up too. You know, but the more control we try to have on every environment that we're in, mm -hmm. the more we lose it because it becomes this obsessive focus and um, it becomes an, a, a bad obsession. So sometimes just like preparing as much as you can and, you know, and, and knowing that when you walk out and you do what you win or loss or like you, you, you do something right, you do something wrong, letting that rope slip and go, okay, back to the drawing board. Yeah. But it also, you know, requires you to beat yourself down. So it's interesting that you say all these things because um, from an athlete's point of view and perspective, I feel like all our journeys mentally are the same. So hearing you saying the exact same thing that emotionally I can connect with is, 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 is for me is very interesting. Hey guys, my name's Simon Harrison, head coach at Kissimmee Muay Thai. I'm here today with Malachi Black and we're going to break down the mechanics of how you throw the leg kick in Muay Thai. So what a lot of people will do when they're throwing this leg kick is they'll turn the body all the way over here. It's gonna leave you vulnerable, that's not really where you wanna go unless you're moving offline. So if we're standing here central, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick my leg up and I'm gonna wrap it around the quad there. I'm gonna use the bottom of my shin just to wrap around from here. I wanna be staying facing so that when I throw this, I can then move in to another technique. Don't step across and turn here. The only time you're gonna do that is if the right cross comes and you want to step off the line, that's okay. But otherwise, you want to be here and just snapping that leg kick up. Little turn of the hip at the end, just to chop in and cut from there. I'll just quickly show you that from the other side. So again, I don't want to be turning all the way over here and facing the wrong way. I want to be throwing it from here, which brings me back on balance straight away to throw whatever I want to throw next from there. So from here, just a little chop and then throw your shots from there. So, you are married to the baddest motherfucker alive. One of the yes. arguably one of the best wrestlers on the planet. Um, you're a mom too. There we go. Yeah. Uh, and you're a mom too. To Is it intimidating one. to have a husband like Roderick Strong? Is it intimidating to uh, be with someone like him who's so accomplished and prestigious as like Roderick Strong? And how, how is that for you? At first, I'll just give you a story. I'm not even gonna, I'm just gonna go right <laughs> we to We love story stories, time. we love stories. Um, literally, the most motherfucking scared and intimidated and unsure of myself that I was, like, the very first intergen intergender match that I did with him yeah. in NXT was the embodiment of like ultimate fear. Mm. Like constantly worried you're gonna slip, constantly worried you're gonna fuck up, constantly worried that your timing's not gonna be there, you're not gonna hear something, you're not gonna read something. Like I was so fucking nervous to just even share like that ring with him. Mm -hmm. And this is someone who I share a bed with. Like, yeah. because I know, like, I'm, I, I could cry, because I just, everybody who knows me has seen me cry about how much this man loves wrestling, okay? And sure. like, he has an integrity about it. Mm -hmm. He's got values in it mm -hmm. that have raised him and he's stripped values that no longer serve him. Mm -hmm. And this is some, like, I'm lucky enough to be beside him while he's like learning who he is mm -hmm. and at the same time finding my own path. Mm -hmm. So like, it's really weird to say, it's almost like he's just like really influenced me in just simply having integrity with this and like sharing a ring with him was because I, I care about his judgment. Of course. I care because yeah. he knows, we, like I tell him, I tell him what I want out of life. I tell him mm -hmm. what I want out of all this physical hard work. I don't want to just be bumping around and fucking taking falls for nothing. Sure. I just want to find what it is that I have to offer, mm -hmm. do it, and then say, peace, see you later. Who else can add to this? Cool. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to overstay my welcome. Sure. And 
he gets that about me. So like, that was like my first test. And I was so fucking scared. That was like the most, I've been on, I've, I've been on pay-per-views. I've met really famous people. I've done all this shit. I actually haven't done a lot of shit. I've just like shared spaces with really great people. And even that sometimes is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have any accolades yet, but because that, but because I am beside him doing this, I know I will. Isn't and I don't funny? even know if I answered the question, but like he's very no, much influenced no, me and you've, like. You've definitely answered the question, yeah. but it's again, like it goes back to the athlete's mind. Cause isn't it funny that the athlete's mind has taught you even despite being fear written basically in that moment, but it's taught you how to deal with it because eventually the fear became admiration because of the fear, right? The fear was needed for you to trust. Yeah, exactly. So like, does he really understand who I want to be? Of course. When it comes to like feedback and understanding what my mindset should be towards this. Right. Cause I, I'm not gonna, you know, I can't go in with any other gimmick than myself. That's needed. Exactly. It, it, that's needed. Like, exactly. It and wouldn't like, work if it wasn't part of you. As, as, as hyperbole as what I do sometimes seems to an audience, a big part of that is me as a human being or the, the torment and, the, and, the, and the, the traumas growing up manifested through you know, the lens of professional wrestling. Yeah. And the same goes for you. It's funny to hear the story about the problem. And I was, because I was wondering what that meant for you, but it's interesting to see how it's a mirror versus, oh, I'm just gonna call myself the problem. No, it's a mirror. There's a, there's a mental aspect to the, the, the moniker, which I find fascinating. And I, yeah, sorry. No, 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 took no, a breath. Please, you please. took a breath and I interrupt all the time. And it's a no, bad it's, habit. It's not, that's, I got to know you're here to talk. Yeah, I so, just. So, um, Troy. <laughs> The little, the little, the little man. He's gonna, he should make a debut on this. You, he'd get a kick out of him. All right, so the next time around, we're gonna have Troy on throwing hands with. He'll throw me around too, because if you're, you're the, the child of Marina Shafir and Roderick Strong, you damn will be having some good genetics. Um, so, you know, so we've we've covered you as a martial artist into pro wrestling. We've covered you being married to like we spoke about, Roderick Strong, who is in my book, one of the all-time greats, especially in the modern era. But you're also a mom. How does that affect you as an athlete going forward, moving forward in life as a professional? Uh, it helped me prepare for him physically. Mm -hmm. uh, and it allowed me to be open enough to understand that this is gonna be a forever, for the rest of my life, uh, journey of growth mm -hmm. as a person. And I'm just like really lucky that I'm his mom. Like I'm, <laughs> like, I'm starting to understand all the shit that I'm doing does not fucking matter unless he's gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. And anybody who gets my time, my energy, because they're gonna get all of me. Mm -hmm. They're like I gotta remember, like they're lucky because that could be being that could be put into my son. Yeah, and it's a good way of looking at things. You know, that's just it. Just goes back to like under like as a person, I'm I'm like really understanding how important time is. Money not important, needed but not important. Sure. You know, circumstances not important. It's just time. It's like having the opportunity to like, just rise up for the day. You know, like I've, I've dealt with depression. I've, I've dealt with insecurity as a, I've just, I'm a normal person. Like any, like any motherfucker living in this neighborhood, I have problems and I'm just lucky that I get to like figure out how to not be a problem for my kid. Like that's all, that's all I want. That's all I want out of life. I think that's a great answer. And uh, I think that's a great way to uh, to end our very deep journey into the uh, mind of Marina Shabir as a uh, married woman, a professional athlete, and as a professional wrestler. We've seen all aspects of Marina. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time.